Today's video is going to be all about my, my decision to get a service dog, why I have a service dog, and um, how long I've had a service dog. If you want to stay tuned for that information, just keep watching. I hope whatever you're doing today, you have a wonderful day. I'm just sitting out here trying to get some sunshine, not being around people because that's not really a good thing. But I thought today we can just go outside and I can show you guys um, just the world outside a little bit. And you can enjoy some sunshine. But I'm going to um, tell you today how I got my first service dog, Meadow, and how she helped me. Um, but I guess the whole process started when I was about 14 years old. I um, went to a camp for physically disabled children um, because I have cerebral palsy and it's a physical disability, nothing to do with my mental, um, mental state. It just means that I can't physically do things. So at that point, when I was 14, I tried to apply for a service dog because I knew with the way that I am, because I have one arm that works and my legs sort of work, but not really, that a service dog would be a good plan. And I, I had seen two um, previous teams of people with service dogs there at the camp and I was really impressed by what their dogs could do for them. So I started investigating a little further and looked up the, the organization um, that they got their dogs through, which is Paws with a Cause. It's a um, national organization and is located in, I think, um, Big Rapids or Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, so the start of that process is you go on their website and you click to apply for a dog so I did that and the application to do that is very thorough is really quite a long lengthy application that asks you tons of questions and then after you hand in your application which which you do have to go to the doctor and get a letter um, stating from your physician that you and you have to know the physician like it has to be like your primary physician you can't to work with this organization i don't think you can just get some blank letter like nowadays you can go on the internet i think they want you to have a physician that you actually have a relationship with and they had to fill out some paperwork and send it along in with your application which asks you a bunch of detailed questions about what you're expecting from a service dog and all these kind of things. So I filled all that out and that took a couple months to get all the information gathered together and filled in. So after I sent the application in, after gathering it for a couple months, then, then you send it to the organization and you, you wait for a couple weeks, uh, maybe a month or so, I don't really remember because I did it when I was 14. Um, but I know that they, after receiving my application, they came out and just had a, like, informational meeting with me, um, to talk about my expectations for a service dog and what, and they brought a dog with them, like, that was one of their demonstration dogs to show me what a service dog could do, because at that point, all I had was a pet, um, like a pet dog that didn't do anything like it was just a regular dog in fact it was kind of a wild farm dog to tell you the truth so i didn't have any experience with large dogs or anything like that so they they come out and they look at your home and then they they started videotaping me um working with their demo dog and talked to me all about the process of getting a dog and like what to expect at that point after they finished doing all that they told me that because I was 14 
it was good that I wanted a service dog and recognized the need for one, but they weren't going to place me with one until I was, I was like, um, the earliest they placed is like 18 or 19 years old. And at that point, but it was good that I was already had my application in because by the time then then I wouldn't have to do any sort of fundraising for the dog because they will if you give them a long enough time they will um, provide like they will fundraise and come up with the money to pay for your dog so you don't have to fundraise or do anything but if I wanted one sooner then I think the deal was at that time that you had to fundraise and make a certain amount of money to pay for your dog. But um, Paws with a Cause does provide dogs um, free of charge. Like you don't have to pay any sort of money for your dog unless you'd like to fundraise to help you get your dog faster, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, so at that point they said, wait, wait a few years and we'll, or wait until you're like 19 or 20 calls back again. So then I called them back when I was ready and was about to go off to college to get my first dog. At that point I was 20 years old. I was trying to move out of the house because what they really want you to do is be as independent as possible so you don't have as much help around you so that you can bond with your dog yourself was was their argument which I totally agree with at the time when I was 20 I didn't really see the point but now I do because I had my first service dog Meadow for um, until I graduated college um, since and I graduated college at like 20 I think 27 I was when I graduated there so um, that was a wonderful experience and it's great to be able to learn with with your dog and grow as people um, I'm not gonna say everything went perfect because it didn't because but boy do you learn a lot about yourself um, when you have another um, thing to take care of I, I, I genuinely uh, liken it to having a toddler that you have to take care of all the time and the toddler is dependent on you but the nice thing about the paws with the cause organization is they are never going to say even after you get certified as a team they don't allow you they don't leave you just hanging there you're always going to be paired for life with a trainer so if you have any kind of issue when you move out into a different environment or when you switch colleges if you're having a problem they'll send the trainer out to you free of charge and try to fix the issue very often my issues with my first dog velvet were because of me because i was too nervous in my in the new environment and the dog reacts to your nervousness basically because i got paired with very sensitive dogs um my first dog was way less sensitive than miss miss velvet here miss velvet definitely needs a lot more of my cues and my confidence um so i went all through college working with this dog and she did, did does things for me like picking up stuff off the foot off the ground she can um push the buttons on to get in, into public buildings she does elevator buttons um she goes and gets help if i need it I'll show you guys all about that in another video. Um, but Velvet, or Meadow was a wonderful dog. She, you could take her anywhere and she, she didn't care. And I, it was a really lovely experience for my first dog. And I would recommend getting them at 20 because you're, 
you know a lot more about yourself and stuff um i'm gonna continue this video this series in another video and tell you more about my specific journey with velvet and how all that came out if you have any questions leave them in the comments below if you want to um i'm gonna do a demonstration video of all the stuff velvet can do so that's also coming up in this series after i explain more about what velvet does and how how she helps me with things and how she reacts with things um you guys have a wonderful day and i hope you enjoyed this time in the sunshine in the park bye bye like comment and subscribe